<laughs> okay, hello everyone. Uh, today's guest is going to be Ozan Hassan. He is a quality insurance tester uh, at MindGeek. Yes. He's going to be talking about what his job entails, what he does, and how it works with advertising. Uh, without further ado, I'll leave the stage for Ozan. <clears throat> Thank Hi. you. Thank you, Yunus. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Ozan Hassan, as Yunus has already mentioned. Uh, so I'm just going to go over a little agenda of what I'll be covering today. Hopefully you'll find it interesting. Uh, first of all, I'm going to give you an overview of the company I work for, which is MindGeek. And then I'm going to give you an introduction into my current role as a software quality assurance tester. I'll just give you a, an overview of the role and the types of tasks that are involved. <clears throat> And thirdly, I will go over some online uh, advertising ecosystem. So I'll just go through briefly what is involved in online um, advertising, what are the systems that need to be incorporated in order to have an online advertising platform. And uh, I'll show you an example of what we call a advertising ecosystem. And then uh, towards the end, point four, I will give you some examples of some successful advertising campaigns that my company have been involved with so far. So this is taken from my, uh, my company's website. Has anyone heard of the name MindGeek? No. Sounds familiar, yeah? No? Probably not because uh, MindGeek is almost like the parent company of the brands that of the websites that we actually own, which I'm gonna reveal shortly. But firstly, as you can see, uh, there are over 115 million plus daily visitors to our websites. There are over 3 billion ad impressions. So ad impressions, uh, someone goes in and views, views an ad on our website. So we're talking big, big numbers here. 15 terabytes of uh, uploaded content daily, again and over a thousand employees with six offices worldwide. So any clues so far No, Probably still not sure what it's about, but with these numbers, it's only really uh, YouTube and Google, which actually beats us in terms of uh, daily visitors. So some quite vast numbers there. So now I'm gonna reveal maybe these uh, brands, I don't know if they seem more familiar. We have Pornhub, Brazers, and U Porn, and My Dirty Hobby. Some of you may or may not know these uh, brands, but basically, MindGeek is uh, owns most of the world's most visited porn sites. So now you'll probably be more familiar with, with these brands now. As well as all these websites here, uh, there are uh, even more than this actually. Correct, yes, yes. But we'll talk about that offline. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we can get into those discussions. Yeah, there's been in involved in controversies and also um, it is practically the world's biggest um, porn site owner, uh, multiple sites. And um, yeah, this it's really interesting how when you go back to the website, it's not really clear what the business is about. <coughs> But yeah, just to give you an overview, it was really started um, by a couple of students that really uh, were smart and they saw an opportunity. What they saw was uh, an opportunity to make um, basically Pornhub like the YouTube of porn. So they saw this opportunity and saw that the potential of these numbers here, these astronomical numbers, so what does that mean? If this many people visit your websites, it means there is golden opportunity for advertising. And they saw that uh, opportunity and they grasped it by starting to buy up these porn sites and now eventually it's become this monster and one of the most recognized brands is Pornhub. So uh, that brand also was, is successful today because of the, the work of the marketing team and the real marketing, um, you know, the marketing schemes that they put out there 
and the advertising campaigns, which I'll come to later on. And by the way, if you've got any questions, sorry, you can stop me anytime if you've got any questions, if, if you want to know something that doesn't make sense or you want to know more about. We're going to have a questions section at the very end, but you can stop me at any point. So I'm going to go over what I, um, the system that I am uh, a software tester for. So what I actually, um, the software that I test is called Traffic Junkie. And what is Traffic Junkie? It's essentially, it's an online uh, advertising network uh, that provides a versatile and intelligent advertising platform. So what does this mean? Uh, Traffic Junkie, what it does, it gives advertisers the opportunity to actually um, get their adverts onto these websites that we've talked about, which is obviously means that you've got a massive audience and it gives you the opportunity to expose your ads to a big audience. So it gives you uh, the, the actual user the opportunity to create advertising campaigns. This can be uh, static banners. This can be video ads. And you're able to say, I've got this advert, these adverts. I want them to be advertised to, um, I don't know, say in Cyprus. You can actually pick your internet provider as well, all the way to IP addresses. So what it gives, it gives the advertiser lots of targeting options. So you can select your country, you can select your internet provider that you want to target. You can select whether you want to target males, females, transgender. You've got all these options that are available as you're actually building your advertising campaign. So at the very end, you're then able to choose the websites um, that your advert will be hosted on and advertised on. And you're then, uh, as a user, you are then um, able to bid how much you want to bid for on a specific advertising spot. You know, so for example, I could say I'm willing to bid five dollars per hundred per thousand impressions on a particular spot. So uh, this is how it works, and obviously you're then set against other bidders and. Um, the, the person who wins the bid will obviously get most of the traffic, but it doesn't mean that the person who bids second, third, fourth, doesn't mean that they're not going to get any advertising space. They still get the advertising space. But what it does is it, uh, there's algorithms which work out um, how much, say, for example, the top bidder should get more advertising space than the fourth bidder or fifth bidder, for example. And I'll come to that um, a bit later on when I when I talk about the ecosystem and how the ad advertising works as a whole. So my role then, just to break down my role, um, I've got some bullet points here of um, my main role. So firstly, um, for Traffic Junkie, if there are any features which um, come in, any enhancements, new features uh, which come from our stakeholders. Um, I'm in charge of writing test plans for those features. So what I need to make sure is that I've understood fully what the new functionality is, and I then need to put in a plan of how we're gonna test this software. As a tough software tester, uh, we are the last in line before that feature goes live to the public. So what we must make sure is that we must make sure that we find any bugs in the system and we must report those bugs to the developers. So we are last in line. We are, um, you know, it's a really important that, you know, any bugs that we find, we, we report. Otherwise, what will happen is, of course, those bugs will go into the live system and then we're going to get customers complaining or we're going to lose money. And obviously, we can't have that. So, and obviously, the um, customer experience won't, won't be good. Um, so, uh, execution of test plans. Um, so, once a test plan has been created and we have a plan of what we're going to test, we then translate those into test cases. And test cases are more prescribed step-by-step -step guides of what feature we're going to test and how we're going to teach it, uh, test it. So, uh, what it will incorporate is a step-by-step -step 
and then the expected results of those tests. So for example, if we've got a new sign up form, we would need to uh, check the sign up uh, button to make sure that the sign up button um, then redirects the user to the sign up form. And that would be one example of a test case. Making sure that um, some fields, for example, they, they might only accept numeric fields. So all of these tests, we must make sure that we incorporate or um, into the test cases. And also you've got to think outside the box. You've got to make sure that you've got to try and break the system. Basically, you've got to try and find, not always think of the conventional way of a user, how they're going to use the system. You've got to try and maybe work in a more unconventional way so that you can find bugs uh, that maybe some people, you know, might not find. Um, and yeah, and it's a lot of uh, collaboration with the stakeholders. So with the sales team that would be requesting the enhancements um, going forward. And obviously we would also test on multiple um, devices. It could be a tablet, mobile and desktop. And also in my role at the moment, I do a lot of knowledge sharing with new members of staff that come in. Um, and we do lots of presentations to management on new deployments of projects. So as, in a nutshell, that is my, my role. Um, yeah, quite a varied role. Um, not one day is necessarily the same as the next. It all depends on the, on the actual, um, uh, what's important for the company. So uh, we need to prioritize our work, but then again, we don't set the priorities. So one day we might be working on a project, but all of a sudden some new priority comes up. We have to drop that and come in and work on the new priority. So you might be working on two or three projects at the same time, but obviously um, in a prioritized order. So any questions so far? Hi, yes. The, the last slide. Yeah. So, do you just uh, report uh, found bugs or do you also try to fix them and present what you did? So, so what from, from QA side, what we need to do, we just need to find the bugs. So what we do is we report the bugs on a system called JIRA, which makes, must make sure that the bug is really clear and easy to understand. And we don't actually fix the bug. So what we do, once we've raised the bug, it's assigned to a developer who will actually write the code and fix the bug. Once it's fixed, they then pass, the developer passes the bug back to us so that we can actually verify that that fix has been completed. So we would physically do the test and then we can close off the bug to say, this has been fixed. If it's not been fixed, we reopen the bug and send it back to the developer and, and supply some screenshots and, and clear wording as to say, this has not been uh, fixed. It could be video as well. Hi. 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 As a tester, um, I want to know if like fixing a they send you a, a, a plan for the task and you test it and then you report the box. But how about if there are some cases, but I'm talking in general, not specific to traffic junkie or like it could sure. be an application task or a game task. Yeah. It, like you spot or something that could be better, like could be better designed. Or yeah. Better yeah. Are you yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and that's a really good point. Yeah, so you know, as a tester, you're always saying, you know, that's another thing you're doing naturally. You're saying, oh, actually, this doesn't work as it as it maybe it should. So what we do is we can raise when we're raising bugs, we have labels that we have, and those labels ensure that those bugs are categorized into the right um, sections and the right people look at them. So, for example, if it's a functionality bug then clearly it will go to the dev who's developed it. There's a functionality issue. UI goes to the, maybe the front end developer. And when, when in your example, we would put the label suggest something like suggestion. So w when it's a suggestion, we know that it's not necessarily a bug, but it's an improvement that could be made. And, and that's a good point actually, yeah. So that's what we would do on those. And if it's related to, um, you know, uh, payments, obviously we need to flag that because payments is really vitally important that we were able to accept payments. So we would flag that as money so it goes to the correct developer that way. Any more questions on role? Thank you for that. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go over like a generic uh, advertising ecosystem. So as I said, this is not just doesn't really just apply to traffic junkie, but in general, this is what would uh, be included in a ecosystem. I chose this diagram because it's quite high level. I don't want to bog you down in loads of details and bore you to death with it, but I found it it's a good way of um, basically explaining what happens in a uh, ad online advertising. Um, platform. So as I said, so people, for example, using Traffic Junkie as an example, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have loads of advertisers. So the advertisers can sign up to a platform. They have lots of ads, which they want to be able to um, get out there and be seen. Now, on top of what I talked about earlier about lots of targeting, so I can have an advertising campaign which can target the locations, gender, etc. Um, on top of that, uh, the member also has um, the ability to uh, basically pick um, the actual, uh, whether the ad should be a static banner, video, etc. on that side. Um, but also, um, they can choose whether, um, you know, how many adverts there are. Um, you know, and, and so on. So once they've logged all their ads onto this, um, what happens next is that um, there is some real-time bidding going on. So this is what I was referring to earlier. Once I've uploaded my ad and I've said, okay, I'm willing to bid X amount for, for the advertising space, what's going on is um, real-time bidding. So as it comes through here, this RTB here, real-time bidding, um, this is essentially an algorithm which works out who's won the bid, who should be getting a certain number of um, advertising space. So, for example, we have number one. He's bidded. He's won the bid. We then report back to the advertiser. They've won the bid. They'll be able to see the data on the platform and see exactly how much it's cost them as well. And what the algorithms here do is work out, okay, bid number one, who's the winner, how long we should be showing their ad. Once they've shown bid, the first bid winner, you've got number two, three, and four. So the algorithm will then change and it will show the ads for uh, the second bidder, third bidder, fourth bidder, fourth bidder. Does that make sense? So it basically flicks round it's an algorithm, it's a piece of code, which then works this out and runs it in real time. So in real time, the advertiser can see how many times their ad's been clicked on, been viewed, and also what we call a conversion. So what is a conversion? So I might have an advertising campaign where I've got um, one ad, which is advertising my service as a car dealer, for example. I don't know, or it could be for whatever it is. So um, my end goal is for uh, the ad to be viewed and to be clicked on, which will then redirect to my website. And what do I want to happen next is I want them to sign up to a service or I want them to pay for a service, for example. So within your... Um, advertising platform, you can um, also see how many people have actually seen your ad, clicked on the ad, and gone through start to finish to say, for example, to complete a full sign up. And then you're able to see how much money that's brought you in um, as a completion. So that's also another example from start to finish how, how it can work from the advertiser side. So on the right hand side of the diagram, we have publisher. So the publisher pretty much controls what uh, the actual webs, websites themselves. So um, I, me as a publisher, I can say I've got five websites with uh, 10 available advertising space. So once I make that available, again, it comes into the middle um, to the ad exchange, to the ad network, and uh, the advertiser it will then pick the advertising space. So for example, I've got a, um, an ad for a mobile device. 
300 by 250. It's for um, females. Then what it does is find the, the appropriate advertising campaign. And obviously, then it will work out who did the most to it. And this is how it all comes together. So you have your demand side platform, which comes from the advertiser, and your supply side. So your SSP and your DSP, and this is how it all comes together. Sure, hi. Well, there are different types of uh, ads, right? So, Correct. Um, uh, is it like Traffic Junkie is providing, like saying, we have time spots with a banner ad, and the companies are applying for it, or is this a random ad? It can be full cover or a banner. There's this, is there a specific like type of... Um, for that, uh, yeah, so for, for, for example, like um, just to give, it doesn't have to be traffic junkie, but say another advertising platform, a lot of the time, it's the same, it's the advertiser and the publisher is the same platform. So they can control, um, they will actually speak to people, to maybe big customers and say, okay, you've got this space. And then they will, um, the system will automatically match this, this, the advertising spot to uh, what the advertiser is trying to advertise. And it will then, but also the advertiser has the option to either select everything that matches or to select, oh, actually I only want these five. So that makes sense. So when you're setting up your advertising campaign, when you get, uh, you've got that option as well. So this is how it all sort of gels together with these algorithms and, and the, the ecosystem. So this is, if you ever see, um, this is also known as prog programmatic um, advertising as well. I don't know if anyone's seen such thing, but there are some good articles out there on how how this works as well. Hi. Maybe the uh, publisher the same thing or do they like communicate with each other yeah yeah exactly i think they actually write the diagram doesn't necessarily it's, it's essentially the same thing yeah it's your the advertiser and the is also the same thing, correct yeah advertiser and agency are also the same thing correct yeah so what you're saying yeah it, it is actually a bit confusing, you're right. So your advertiser and your demand side platform, so basically this is the software. Demand, the DSP is the software for the advertiser, yeah? And your agency will have to use that software to be able to then create advertising campaigns. But advertiser asks uh, agency to advertise them on the demand side platform. Like, correct, correct, yeah, yeah. Um, it depends really on the setup of the company as well. So it could be different for different companies. Or so some 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 companies might not even use an agency. They might have their own in-house team, for example. <coughs> um, yeah, and it's the same on the right hand side, the publisher, uh, the SSP is essentially the, the software, the platform. Is there any any other questions? No? Thank you. Okay, so now I'm moving on to some examples of some successful advertising campaigns. And it's not always easy for a company like MindGeek or using the, uh, you know, the Pornhub brand to do some advertising because um, you know, it can be taboo. Although a lot of people visit the sites, not everyone is comfortable talking about it and they may not admit that they visit to these sites. So this brings about a challenge as an advertiser of how we're going to get, get around that taboo. So um, as also you can't use your conventional um, advertising, you know, maybe tools that you've got Facebook. Uh, so it brings about a different challenge that they had to really overcome. Um, so yeah, I'm, what I'm going to do now is actually go through some successful advertising campaigns. So how they actually came about it was they own their own Twitter, they had to be clever about what they said and what they what would be accepted. So here's some uh, some examples here where the person is saying, what are you watching? Nothing. And it's the world's biggest archive of nothing. And also moving on, 
DIY do-it-yourself, America's largest do-it-yourself website. So they're clever about what they, you know, what they use and the actual advertising campaigns that they use. Also, back in 2020, they, um, it was also in the news, um, Pornhub decided to, because during the coronavirus, they decided to, uh, for Italy, who was going through a bad time at the time, Italy, they decided to make um, the sign up free for, for the Italians. So that was also a good, uh, good marketing ploy as well by the company. And that brought about actually quite a lot of uh, interest. And obviously, in general, the number of visitors went through the roof during the pandemic uh, to all of the sites. So lastly, I will just share with you one of the... Um, the so, yeah, sure. on another site or on Ah, good question. Actually, right. So, oh, no. So this one here, this is just the advertising campaigns in general for the company. Yeah, yeah. So these, these examples here. Oh, no. So this is like, so this is not necessarily something to do with me or my team. So, I'm just talking in general uh, with advertising. So what I try to do is just to bring the advertising element into this presentation, because yeah, I'm not an advertising expert, but I know I'm just going on the advertising campaigns that the company did to get the brand out there. Um, so these are um, Pornhub's own advertising. And also actually another point that you've reminded me of, if for example, um, we cannot sell all the advertising space that's available, what happens is Pornhub will take that advertising space and push these types of ads to, to those available spots, if that makes sense. So if on Traffic Junkie or we have some unsold advertising space, then the, then the company, uh, then it's automatically what happens is it will then get used for our own brands. And then so that advertising space is not just left blank and it's used. Thank you uh, to talk uh, about the advertising space on the sites that are under the Mind the Vehicle. Correct, correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so these are, I've got one more from Christmas. So this was what, a few years ago they did a, um, a Christmas um, ad, which I'll just play here. Yeah, so I'll find it from here then. Sorry? The presentation took over that screen. Oh, okay. So if we do this. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, so it's.
Şu an açık olması lazım. Yeah, so that was a few years ago and quite a successful advertising campaign at the time. So, yeah. cool. <laughs> okay, so now, um, yeah, that really concludes my uh, presentation. So please, if you have any questions, please, um, you can ask me now or if you feel more comfortable at another time, I'm also open uh, to contact from uh, Professor Yunus. Um, whether you want to ask questions on the you know, software side, testing side, or any of the advertising element of it. Hi. I know that uh, some uh, algorithm that uh, basically uh, 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 makes it know how much, for example, you have seen on the screen something. Yeah. In Instagram, for example, when you scroll, they know how much you look. Yes. Do you have something like that for other sites? Yeah, well, um, so I'm not sure about sites, but for ads specifically, yes. Um, within the advertising platform, it will tell you how exactly how many times your ad has been viewed, um, clicked on as well. Correct. So that would be, yes, exactly. And that would be known as an impression. So it also records uh, how many impressions as well as the physical clicks as well. Uh, can I ask a personal question? Yeah. How it all started? How did you become a tester? And is the, the, this was is, is this was the first one or have you done uh being be the tester for the softwares and other companies yeah so um yeah i must admit i didn't think that i would be a tester at yeah so it's you know the world's biggest porn company it's not something that i sort of set out to do when i left university but it just shows you, you never know where you're going to end up but firstly i started really in uk because i'm born and brought up in the uk so i started working as like a project um, project manager, I did business analysis as well uh, within local government, within within councils. So within my role, I've always been doing testing, but not exclusively a testing role. So I've mainly worked in gathering requirements for software, and then uh, I decided to move. I also moved, uh, worked a little bit at a bank in London for Investec. Again, that was more business analyst, project manager. But within those roles, you still do an, an element of testing. Depends on the, on the setup. Job, job titles can also be misleading. But what I find with testing, it's pretty much clear what you, what you have to do in each role. So then when I moved to Cyprus, I saw that there was lots of testing roles um, in, in the south. And obviously, with my English, it would be far easier for me to adapt, and and that's where really I was look was aiming and looking at these um, roles in these testing roles. I also, um, for a short while, I worked in Limassol, but obviously, it was the journey was quite a lot, 
and that was for a company called Kpax Marketing, and they were doing online casinos. So I had some um, experience there, and then I found found this job here in Nicosia, and I've been here for about three years. As a software tester, you obviously think differently to the normal uh, customer, like normal viewer of the site. So how do you how do you approach this? Like, yeah. Because you need to still know how the uh, average human being will interact with the site. Well, exactly. Yeah. Um, and you should never you should never lose lose how you would think a normal user would would use the software as well. That's very important to, um, you know, have in your mind. But yeah, you have, you almost have, um, when we're going through the test test cases and doing, say, like the, the testing scripts, that's when we would think mainly more like the, the person who's going to use it. Um, so because it's also making sure that the software is how it was specified. So how it's been specified in the documents, we want to make sure that it is as is. Now, the other part to it, once we've gone through the normal testing side of things, that's where we would um, think more like a typical user and how it should work. After we've completed that, that's when we would do what's called ad hoc testing. And ad hoc testing is where we need to think differently and outside the box and really try and break the system, yeah, and try and really... Um, maybe use the system in the way it's not been intended to try and find some, some bug. May I say something as an example? For sure. Uh, if you search about it, you're going to find uh, something about McDonald's and uh, Australia. So they were coming up with this campaign where you can actually uh, pay for each of the ingredients separately. And they, by just pressing the buttons on the machine. So you go there, you choose whatever you want and you get the food. So what happened is they didn't do the testing properly. So you were ordering 10 burgers. Each of them was one burger. But the, if you add enough meat in it, it was one ten. So basically people were ordering 10 burgers, asking them to remove the meat. So they were getting 10 breads. Oh, yeah. Because it, the meat was counting as 10-1, they were getting one dollar uh, on top of it and asking for a burger for it. So they would actually order eleven burgers, ten without meat, and they would get it for free. And this was <laughs> going on for a couple of weeks. <laughs> so this is like also part yeah. of the testing phase of how this might be used in the opposite way, yeah. not just as the end-term user. Yeah, no, that's a good example. Yeah, how one small oversight can mean have like a big big effect yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Um, i can call myself a tech nerd so um i'm where i'm interested in testing actually okay not specifically like testing everything yeah but feedback yeah yeah feedback. so i i'm a very um I feel very happy when I receive update from a, a simple application because I uh, I want my every uh, application up to date and and when I receive update I check like what what is new and what's been yeah. fixed what's, yeah. because update basically means uh, putting something new developing and uh, maybe you know making it more easier or more yeah. original. So um, sometimes. I give feedback to those companies or those applications, but do you think they're um, like receiving that feedback, yeah. actually receiving that? Well, that's really, yeah, that's really interesting. That the company should be really listening to what you're saying because you're the user, right? So a lot of the changes that say in, in companies that I worked for before, it's not only coming from an internal company, it's coming from the user to say, well, actually, no, we're not happy with how with too many clicks here. Can we do it? You know, or there's something that you know they've come up with a good suggestion. They should be taking your feedback into account. But whether they do or not, that's down to the organisation. And and and. Do you think that this is for like specific, uh, like 
people who are responsible for working with feedback, right? It, it, it doesn't go to the Testers or developers? Well, it should, um, it really depends on how the company is set up. But in my view, it should go to the product team. So who's, who's managing the product? Um, this feedback should be read and then they sh it should be considered to say, okay, well, and then the product team can say, well, actually, yeah, they have a point. Shall we make this change? And once they make, decide to make the change, then it gets um, put in as a change request for the developers to carry out and then it will of course it will then be tested by the testing team you know it's one time i was very happy with the update of an application and yeah i'm also thinking well they probably didn't know i mean i wrote the feedback but they yeah they didn't know that i was thankful for their yeah yeah <laughs> yeah sure hi Um, it was about software feedback. Um, I was going to say, now, nah, don't worry, man, if it comes to you, yeah. yes, I just want to ask uh, yep. a presentation on the magic word. Thank you. My name is Asan. I was like um, wondering if you would advise uh, any uh, organization or SME uh, to have an application, you know, to update their members. To advise who, For sorry? For example, if yeah. an organization is uh, aiming to have something like, uh, I don't know, thousands uh, or hundred thousands of followers around the world, for yeah. example, and is keeping, the organization is keeping these followers uh, mm. as members you understand yeah uh, yeah do you advise the organization to build an application you know, to update to update the, 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 the members yeah the basis? yeah for sure because um you know and also knowledge now sorry like data now is key and obviously having that amount of data also and this is what it's all about and it comes down to online it comes back to online advertising you're only as good as the data that you collect um, whether, so from knowing that, you know, which device people use, which websites they go on, their geolocation and their salaries there. So if you want to keep um, an up-to-date list of that, then of course I think people should, uh, you know, depending on what, what service you're offering, is it, you know what I mean? Um, then you, they do, people collect the data and obviously... That's where it's really powerful now, especially with analytics. What happened last year, October, with uh, Facebook, uh, you know, shut down. Yeah, uh, yeah. we saw the we saw the the effects of that, and it was only a short time, and obviously the stock price went down billion over a billion, I think it was at the time, big loss in stock market, you know, and it was only for of what was it about ten hours, not even twenty four hours, I think it was down, and the chaos it caused, yeah. It shows you. Hi. Uh, I just got, uh, you said that you're not uh, uh, familiar with uh, advertising uh, because you're mostly testing, yeah. but uh, you also were talking about conversion. Is there any, is there uh, another team who does it or is it <coughs> also your work to like think, is it, is this advertisement looks advertisable? Would I click it? Like, uh, yeah, does yeah. It converts me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, sure. Good question. Now I get it. And it's so what we do is you will have like a compliance team who will look at the ads and say, okay, are these ads suitable? You know, will they, yeah, they will say so compliance team will check the ad to say, okay, are we actually, is, is this ad legal for one? Can we get it out? I think you're, what you're saying is, is more of the marketing side to say, okay, um, you know, what's the reaction that this adder has got? Will it bring us good attention? Maybe they have focus groups to say, we have this advert. What do you think of this advert? They might have small focus groups to get some feedback on an advert before they would push it out. Um, but I think they have like, you know, social media teams, you know, which is linked to marketing and um, from, you know, MindGeek side and Pornhub in particular, they've been quite smart in um, following 
current events and jumping on current events and maybe tweeting about it, you know, making, making a joke, keeping it lighthearted. And they've been good at that. Intersection of what compliance team would do and tester would do. For example, like different types of advertisements. For example, when you have not a simple poster, but like a, you know those posters with a, when you put cursor there, the cursor changes and it's like little yeah. mini game. Yeah, yeah. For something like that, or when it's a carousel of a different poster which changes uh, fast. Like, yes. Like. Uh, is it again like is it something you would say like this one for example changes too fast or this one is uh, too like um, you know like some advertisements yeah. are too bright and yeah, they're yeah. attracting your attention in a negative way or is it yeah. again compliance again that would be the com that would be more the compliance team all we're focusing on in the examples that you've given like a, a slider ad which is like a carousel Exactly. We want to make sure. So does it does the carousel change every five seconds as it should? If not, we will raise a bug. We will still test everything. We'll still test video ads um, and obviously test the static banners and those sliders that you're talking about, the carousels. And but we're just focusing on does it work as does it work as it should? And we have some test ads basically that we would use, you know. Hi. I, I really don't like uh, when an application or a software don't have advanced settings or advanced sections. Yeah. I can understand as a designer, um, a designer should design the, the software or the application according to the, like, between all, for the, for the old ages to yeah. use them easily. Um, so it, it should be accessible and it should be easy to use. But I really, I'm really looking forward to have like more in most of the applications to advance settings, to deal with the settings and change some things or far more to yeah. do something. And this is uh, one of the biggest um, missing things in the application, I guess. So the other thing is a very strange question. So when when we when we are on YouTube, when we see an ad, it, yeah. it can be like a standard, uh, you know, car ad, or it can be maximum of okay condom ad. It, it's not like too sexual ad. Yeah. It's not legal. But uh, I wonder, it, w is there any advertising has been has been made on um, that foreign sites like regular ads, like not yeah, not yeah. Um, condoms or not sexual, but just a regular ad. Yeah, for sure. Like it's 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 open. It's open to anyone that wants to advertise their. Are they Yeah, yeah. So there are, there are. I've like seen for myself, like there are like regular companies because simply they know that the audience will be big. But then again, you've got to think about product placement and is it the right forum for what you're trying to sell? But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it depends really on the service that you're offering, you know, and who you want who you want your audience to be for that ad. Whether you think they're more likely to to access it and then ultimately sign up or, or you know, buy, buy whatever you're selling. Um, but no, I have, I've seen, you know, it's, it's because of the audio, because it's literally because of the number of people that visit the sites is humong you know, huge. Uh, how about the ad blockers? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. This is where, um, yeah, there is a constant battle with Google on this, um, on, on, on ad blockers uh, going forward. And uh, there are, uh, I think there was certain ad types where they're not too happy for, for anyone to use. So at the end of the day, Google, they're the internet, they're in charge. They can decide, they could decide one day to, to, to ban a, a, a type of ad um, and then you will have to adapt to that straight away. You'll have to remove it. Um, so they're the ones that decide, really. Um, but obviously, being from our, if we're controlling your own website, then you've got control on more control on, you know, on the ads that you put on there. Uh, do you work long in this field? 
Like several years, so I've worked at this in this particular company for three years now, and I had to, uh, oh in the field, yeah, in the field probably about ten years, I'd say. Maybe people incorporate uh, like neural networks into work or something uh, that can displace uh, like uh, human work hours. Yeah, well, that's interesting. Um, there's lots of uh, automation now is the big like buzzword when it comes to, you know, not testing also, but also other things. So, you know, we have like in companies I've worked for now, automation is becoming more and more popular. And you're seeing that with also the jobs that are available now. So when you're looking for testers, more and more, they're saying they want automated testers. And that's actually in the job title itself. So anything that can be any repetitive testing task that can be automated will obviously save time because it saves the tester time they can focus on more complex tests to get on with rather than the repetitive tests. Um, but the key is maintaining automated script because you're writing, you're writing script so that the testing can just go through and, and, and test the software itself. Yes, yeah, so you're exactly right. So an automated tester would have a their own scripts, their own automation script, which they would run and manage. Um, and it would say, if you want to test the sign-up process, so a customer going in, signing up to a website, that could be done automated. Um, hi, yes, sure. Uh, do we need any kind of education or any knowledge for No, 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 not at all. Like, um, it's not as if I, like, for example, using my example, and I see other testers. It's not like you don't really need anything, any other pre, uh, you know, any pre knowledge, really. You just, yeah, you could do it as a freelance. That specifically in Cyprus, I don't see many contracting roles, but in UK and rest of Europe. There are many contracting roles where you can do the job for six months. You could work for yourself and, and do it as a contractor. But, you know, you don't, you don't need any experience to know because I knew nothing about advertise, online advertising before I joined this company. Similarly, in, in Larnaca, the main thing is the main skills you need are attention to detail, um, good communication skills. So you always have that communication with the developers, the product team, and the rest of the stakeholders. And you need to be able to, you know, work quickly and efficiently and to, to be able to spot bugs, really. And then you just, you gain confidence as you, the more experience you get. But you need some technical knowledge for, like, as you said, the second phase when you actively search for bugs. <coughs> so to be, like, qualified to be in or... Honestly, I wouldn't say so because, think about it, you go to a new company... You have to learn the system. So it doesn't matter how much experience you've got. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter how much experience you've got, say, in another company. You go to a new company, you have to learn their system, and that's when you build the knowledge. And that's when you, you then you can think, you know, apply it. Are we rec are we still recording? Are we? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I'm delighted. Um, what were your jobs? Are you thinking like being on a test for software or a game, or are are you good? Um, I'm happy. I'm happy for now. Um, but I know that the beauty of this type of role, as I just said, you can apply it to any any organization or any sector because the principles are the same. So one day if I get bored and say I want to move on, I know that there are, there are jobs that I can get in a completely sep different sector. Um, and, and the opportunities are there, like worldwide. That's the thing with agile software development. Um, you know, developers are always really, 
especially in Cyprus, I know they are very like hard to come by. So they're high in demand, but the same with testers. But these jobs you can find anywhere in the world. Um, I know that for, for example, Microsoft is giving free subscription to their service for the testers. So yeah. how about you? Do you have any advantages <laughs> on <my> <laughs> Like free advertisement. <laughs> well, no, I think we get we get ten percent off on any in any branding we want if we want to buy a t shirt, hoodie, whatever. So we get ten percent off, we get ten percent discount. Yep, yep. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to wear that. Uh, you get ten percent off the disc yeah, you don't even get yeah. Uh, nothing's for free, I'm, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be nice. But it's 10 uh, 10 um and that's all that's all we get <laughs> but we get good medical we get good medical care as well to be fair so good medical insurance hi yeah, uh, hello hi um, hi Emmanuel. i got a question like how did you how did you get the customer i'm sure like actually we are known because we are in some country around the world but especially at the beginning how did you get your customer that were you yeah. searching or hacking them to show them that the website are not efficient or how did you make yourself known yeah good good question um so i suppose coming here i was more i had more experience so let me maybe maybe i should go back to where i didn't have as much experience and that is something that um thinking back if it, i would say that would be a good idea if you want to but in most testing jobs it's about finding the right company that will give say maybe graduates a, a go and there are those companies out there like for example i know for a fact my current company they take on many many graduates so they're willing to give graduates a chance they're not expecting you to you know be a world beater straight away um, they know that the value in bringing in graduates and giving them an opportunity. So one I would say is finding the right company that would give um, graduates an opportunity with maybe someone who hasn't got experience. And the, the bit about your question about showing them what you can do, in any case, what I've found is in this role, um, especially referring to testing, uh, you might do one or two interviews but before you even get to the interview, they will send you a test, a, a task to do. So they will actually send you a testing task. So they'll, they'll say to you, this is a website. Um, please write the test plan and write the test cases for this web page. So that they would actually get you to, to do a real life task. And then obviously, depending on how you get on with that, then you can move forward. Also, I would obviously um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I don't know if you're on LinkedIn, but that's a fantastic tool. LinkedIn is the tool to use to get yourself known, and you're able to build a network all over the world. And you're able to put in the sorts of jobs that you want, the sorts of skills that you have that you can offer. And it's, I highly recommend it if you know when once you're ready to look for work to get on LinkedIn because it's superb and also has lots of jobs on there um, because it's essentially it's like the Facebook of the professional world but it allows you to you know find jobs and get yourself out there last questions is there any other questions <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, if, if anybody has any other questions, otherwise, thank you very much for coming today. No worries. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Very interesting. Hopefully, it was interesting anyway, or you, you got some value out of it. I hope. And that's, yeah, great. Thank you anyway. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Do you remember how you discovered the world around you?
Can you hear the beat of life? Can you hear it? By seeing it and feeling with all your senses. Hey, can you still hear it? There's something in you, driving you, calling you. Calling you in closer and closer. It's happening right now. Time to free your curiosity that's always in you. Now, it's time to act. This is an act of discovery. It requires looking to the world in new ways. not offering you the answers. We are here to encourage your questions, but more important than the question is how you answer it. Try the ordinary, then try the unusual. To live is learn, and to learn is to live, live, learn. It's an endless process. This is your path. This is your journey. You decide how it's going to be. Just enjoy every moment of it. We believe in design, keeping it simple but also significant. We believe in art for looking at the world with a unique perspective. We believe in creativity for communicating better with the world. Creativity takes courage. The future belongs to the curious. Come and experience it with us in Arakad and discover your creative potential.